Hi, my name is Hago Hornis. I'm the manager of Intelligent Systems at Peppel & Fuchs. In this video, we will cover another configuration example for our safety controller. In this example, we're going to use a safety circuit with EDM feedback. Uh, this is going to be an example that we're, we're going to modify a configuration with three e-stops that, that we have used throughout these videos. And uh, these are just three three dry contact e-stops. We have our reset into the contact S72 and uh, the change that we will apply is to add the EDM which is a feedback loop from the safety contactor where the rule is that the feedback loop always has to be inverted to the actual output of the of the contactor. So if the contactor is on running the motor then the feedback EDM needs to be off and if the contactor is off, the motor has stopped, then the feedback needs to be closed or true. So this is done uh, quite easily. What we do is we go down on the device library until we come to the external device monitoring section and we will pick a function block here and drop it onto the configuration screen. Now what you can see there is you can again name the device, so I can I can call this EDM from motor 1 for instance and uh, I need to provide a, a switching time. The default switching time of 100 milliseconds is is a little too aggressive for my taste for most contactors. Um, in what, what this means is that as soon as the safe output turns on, uh, the safety controller must see an inversion of the feedback signal within 100 milliseconds. Uh, that may work for smaller contactors, but it will certainly not work for large contactors where a lot of load needs to be switched. So my suggestion is to do something on the order of, of one second, 1,000 milliseconds, and uh, that almost always works. Now we have in the configuration two signaling inputs, two standard inputs. S72 is already used as the reset function, so we simply click S81 and there, that's where we will connect our EDM feedback. If you go to our website you can download a document that goes into the wiring a little bit and shows you uh, how, that is, how that is done. So having done that, we click OK. That adds a new function block. Doesn't really look all that much different. We then download to the monitor and run this configuration to take a look at what happens. OK, on the diagnostic screen, we see that the three e-stops are in fact released and the EDM gives us a true signal. Uh, in this case that doesn't mean that the EDM feedback loop is, is closed, it means that it's in the right proper state which, uh, which is, happens to be closed in this case simply because the, uh, the safe outputs are connected, are open. So if I, if I give the reset signal, which is applying plus 24 volts to pin S72, then everything will start up. Now, uh, again, EDM is a true signal, even though we know that the feedback circuit is open. Okay, so that's a, that's a little different compared to uh, safe inputs, but that's the way these things work. Now, if I create a fault, or let's not create a fault, let's do this the right way. If I, if I just shut down my e-stop, then everything will go down. And if I reset my e-stop, then I can provide my reset function to turn everything up on. You perhaps saw that for a, uh, a little bit of time, the EDM connecting line turned red and that is for that one second time interval that I provided for the feedback circuit to follow the main breaker. 
Now, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to create a fault, and the way I create this fault is I pretend that my motor contactor is bad and the signaling, the, the auxiliary contacts do not work properly. The easiest way for me to simulate that is by disconnecting the wire that connects the feedback into input S81. Since the EDM feedback is anyhow open right now, really nothing changes, but as soon as I hit an e-stop, uh, that feedback circuit should close, which it cannot do right now because I've disconnected it. And as a consequence, the EDM function block goes into a red flashing mode. I don't know how well that can be seen on the video, but on the actual screen it's red flashing. This is called a critical fault and it requires a one extra step to reset this. So the proper way to address this scenario is in, in the real application you would replace the faulty safety contactor, the faulty motor starter. Uh, in my case it's much simpler. All I have to do is I have to reconnect the wire that I took off and connect it to this, this S81 input, which I'm doing right now. And because this was a critical fault, I need to acknowledge this by tapping the set button on the safety controller. The set button is on the front face, it's a little black button, and it just needs to be tapped lightly. And when I do that, the EDM will go back to normal operational mode. And releasing the e-stop, followed by the reset, will restart the system. So you can see even EDM is very simple using the safety controller. I hope you found this configuration example helpful. Please watch our other videos discussing the Pepper and Fuchs safety controller.